Now today in the shop, we fought some really <laughs> nasty winds. We thought it was going to be better, but we did wait it out and we did manage to get all the clear on, including a kickstand that we got from Bill. That was a real, a real upper for me. Looking at this tank, the way this played out at the end of the day with all the clear on it, it this just couldn't have been nicer. This, this truly turned out to be a good day. I shared a, a, a good tip from John Pothier, a good way he made a wiring diagram. And at the end of the day, we had the parts in the garage drying up. It was a great day. Hey, we've waited very patiently the last couple days for a really nice painting day. I think today's going to be the day. I got up really early. I wanted to try to get some of the paint on. The This is the final clear. Try to get it on with the minimum of wind blowing. And, uh, so We're going to find out if that worked out in my favor or not. But anyway, it, it does look like it's a reasonably good day. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to go up into the high 30s, low 40s. And we'll get this final coat of clear on and put it aside to dry for a few days. Maybe even get the kickstand to paint it. The, I just a lot of little things I still want to do here. I still have about eight things on my priority list. And we may have a fairing coming in for repair in the next couple days. So no point standing around. Let me get busy. And I want to thank Joe for sharing that information about the fake oil filters that uh, some people are selling on the internet. When I bought the oil filters, I just bought, I go back a ways, I bought six for this bike and for the, for the Ninja. And I'm very sure that they are, I double checked them. There's nothing on the box or on the, anywhere that says made in China. They have real uh, Yamaha and real Kawasaki boxing packaging. And, but that is a critical thing. If you buy things off the internet from unknown suppliers, especially oil filters, I can't think of a more important thing not to skimp on. Oil or oil filters or tires. Now the truth is I have several things that are obviously made in China. These little caps, this, the mirrors, the gas caps. These things are all fine, but I'm not sure about oil filters. See, that's where I, that's where I uh, draw the line. In fact, on, even on the R1, we have these uh, the, the levers and little, there's little, I call them little ornaments. The things that it really doesn't matter. But boy, when it comes to oil filters, I'd want one. <laughs> I'd want one not made in China, that's for sure. You know, most of the people have a passion for motorcycling. You put your heart, your soul, your time, your energy, your money, whatever, and, and, and safety. And you really don't, there's things I don't want to compromise on. I've found that the hard way, so have many of my friends. Cheap tires, not the way to go. Cheap chains, not the way to go. Cheap oil filters or cheap inexpensive oil, not the way to go. And I think we all have our list of stuff that we're certainly willing to make a little compromise on if the price is good. Certain things I'm not willing to compromise one iota on. One, I will just pay the price. And tires happen to be one of them that I know they're less expensive tires. I like the Michelin twos. I have the angels on that Vlad sent me. I haven't really tested them a full season yet, but there are just certain things. And boy, Joe, you hit it right on the head. I can't think of anything more important than an oil filter, especially when you have thousands of dollars tied up in these bikes and your time and your money and your energy. And then to, to slap on an oil filter that might be substandard. No way. Thanks for sharing that information, Joe. Appreciate it. Looks like the birds are extra hungry this morning. Just like me. <laughs> Where are they all hiding that tree over there? It is time to get motivated here. To get highly motivated. That'll help. Okay, here in the shop, we had an ongoing issue with the RD. I luckily had the manual and I wanted to show this. This is from a tip maybe everybody out there can use. I had suffered along with my uh, next to blind eyesight trying to read this schematic. I had a lot of people tell me, you know, that this is, they have had the same problem. It's hard to read. So what <clears throat> my good friend John Pothier did, he blew the whole thing up. So this is. Let's just compare them here, apples and oranges. This is the one, I guess this is the one for 70-year-olds. But look at the difference. 
that became that. I printed it out on my own printer. And if you have an RG400, I could forward you that file and you can print it out too if you want. Just let me know. This for the cost of four sheets of paper. Now, it also has another benefit. If I get this all greasy and dirty, I can go do print another one. I noticed the paper on this one. I went to write on it. The paper was, yeah, well, it's 40 years, 30, 40 years old. But what a nice upgrade this is. John, boy, that'll make working on it just a little bit easier. And I, as, as everybody knows, I hate electrical work anyway. This will certainly, certainly make it a lot easier. When you look at that side by side, no comparison. You know, yesterday we got this final sanded out. It is ready to go. I've got a fresh tack rig ready for the final tack ragging before I jig it up and put that final clear on. And the kickstand that Bill generously donated to us, we have that ready to paint black while we're waiting for the clear to dry or at the end of the job. Let's see how the weather's going to play out this morning. Now this is the brand of clear we're going to be using. We've used it for the whole job. It was supplied by... Luciano and it's this is only the first job that I've actually used it on but it looks like it's good quality It dried up nicely and it sanded even better And a material of four to one mix and we are hoping the weather it looks like it's coming up It's over 35. It was 35 this morning Coming up almost 40 now, and I'm really looking forward to I just hope the wind doesn't start kicking up but when you don't get up early in the morning, it's either cold or it's windy, and sometimes it's both. Final tack rig this down. Make sure we don't have any anything that's going to get in the final clear. Now after fighting that wind, I had no idea how this was going to lay down. Actually, because it was pretty cold, it laid down beautifully. So we got that first coat on, and now of course you have to, the patience has to kick in. You have to put it aside to dry, and give that a good 20 minutes to a half hour. And no matter what angle I look at this from, it looks like that first coat went on beautifully. We're going to try to get two or maybe three coats on about 20 minutes apart and I just can't imagine the wind was terrible <laughs> the temperatures coming up to 40 but that wind is howling ah, here comes the Sun anyway but the only way I know you kind of beat the system is get up early in the morning when the wind is at its minimum or well, right now it's kicking up so all right we got 20 minutes I'm gonna go get a coat of black on that kickstand And that's up by the heating vent drying. And again, thank you, Bill. We just really, this is going to add a nice little dimension, nice little touch to our RD project. So 
So this will give us some dry time up there by the heating vent. Once that's totally dry, whatever clear is left over, we can get a couple coats of clear on that, but that'll be a real nice little, nice little accessory on the RD. Well, seeing that and fast forward, you get an idea of just how long this takes to, to do. A lot of people think you spray once with a spray gun and walk away. Well, it's a little more intense than that. But anyway, just hope you get the idea from that. And now by looking at this from every possible angle, looking for any little dry spot that I might have missed, so far it looks like I've got it pretty well sprayed out. Well, we didn't beat the wind, but at least we got the clear on. I'm going to get that right out into the garage. That's going to dry up now, uh, one day in the garage, and then maybe two days in the cellar by a heating vent. And I, I think that's, Luciano, I think you're going to be a happy guy. That might be one of the nicest H1s around. I'm looking at it from every possible angle. That is absolutely, that is motorcycle artwork. And that's what we always try to do. Well, I couldn't be happier the way this came out. Now, I want to go out and get some clear on the kickstands, get that hanging up out here, and then celebrate. I don't know what to do to celebrate. <laughs> hey, we all, we all have a lot to celebrate for. We made it through this virus so far anyway. So I try to look at it in some sunlight with the lights on in the garage with the lights off under pretty much every lighting condition I can simulate. I'm looking for anything that I really want to put some more clear on or in this case uh, it came out pretty good. Luciano you're really going to be happy. So of course I want to thank the healthcare workers. Boy, thank you guys for keeping us safe. Luciano, you are going to be one happy boy. And <laughs> the kickstand, it couldn't be nicer. Unbelievably good day. I didn't expect it to be this good. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Now we do try to post up some new motorcycle related video uh, almost every day, we w depending on the weather most of our painting projects. But anyway, we do, uh, we hope the winter's going to play out nice. We have plenty of stuff coming up in the near future. We have a fairing that needs to be repaired. And all of our clients seem to appreciate that uh, I do this kind of work with a lot of love in my heart. And I always strive for excellence. I always try to make it the, the highest level quality I can. And I'm sure most of my clients, and I, when I say that, I say it with tongue in cheek, I should say most of my friends, they really appreciate this. And it gives us all a, a nice way of sharing our passion for motorcycling. And I think the tips I can lay out on the video after probably almost 60 years of painting, there must be something you can learn there. I don't know. <laughs> I listen to Alan Milliard, and I don't know how to drill a straight hole in a piece of aluminum. So... I don't know. It is it is a lot of fun doing this work. And it keeps me busy, keeps me active. I don't know if it keeps me young. You have to ask Karen. That's 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 a moot point. But anyway, sharing it with you, sharing it with all my friends, one of the things I really do enjoy. And boy, oh boy, as time goes by, have I ever come to appreciate how important it is when you get at this point in your life, to stay busy, stay active, keep the passion fires burning. Don't just turn into a jellyfish. Don't just give up on life. Keep every day positive. And, and of course, the main thing, get as many riding miles as you can. Now, I don't know when we're going to have our next riding day. You never know when you wake up in the morning. 
uh, it's it's always a surprise. But I always strive to have a life of no Groundhog Days, no matter what. And and so far today did not disappoint. We beat the wind, we beat the weather. It's in the garage drying up. The check is in the bank. What else can I say? Thank you guys so much for watching.